In a previous video, I introduced concepts to help you understand why it's important to have a standard approach for establishing trust and issuing digital identities for your workloads and infrastructure. And right at the end of the video, I mentioned that Spiffy and Spire can enable you to accomplish this. But it was important to lay the groundwork and understand the why before we get to the what. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the what by specifically focusing on Spiffy. And I suppose a good starting point is to share what Spiffy actually stands for. Spiffy is short for Secure Production Identity Framework for Everyone. And I think you'd agree with me, it's a mouthful, so I will stick to calling it Spiffy. That's what it stands for, but what is it? For this and a number of the following concepts, I'm going to refer to the passport analogy from the previous video. And remember, our desired outcome is to have a standard or universal approach for issuing and validating identities across different platforms. Whether it's a workload on a VM in the cloud or on-prem, whether it's a Lambda function, a node or container running in Kubernetes. But in order for that to work, there has to be compliance or adherence with certain standards. In the same way that a passport office and an issuing authority adhere to a universal set of standards for both issuance and validation, Spiffy defines a set of standards of its own to accomplish something similar in the software space. It's an open source technology that uses these standards to implement a universal software identity. Now remember, universal in this context, as I've already touched on, means that it is interoperable and platform agnostic. Spiffy can issue these identities to servers like VMs or nodes in Kubernetes, distinct microservices, or other non-human entities in your digital space. Now, to have a good understanding of Spiffy, we also have to consider its main components. And I'll discuss those starting off with the Spiffy ID. Just like your passport has a unique number or ID that is bound to a specific individual, the Spiffy ID is a unique string for identifying a particular workload or infrastructure component. And this Spiffy ID is structured as a URI with Spiffy as its prefix, followed by the name of the trust domain, and finally the name or identity of the specific workload or infrastructure component. Next, I'll cover the Spiffy trust domain. And the name is somewhat self-explanatory because this is a territory or security boundary of trust that only recognizes a certain set of Spiffy IDs. And this trust domain has an issuing authority responsible for issuing out the IDs. Once again, I'm gonna to refer to the previous video where I spoke about an office analogy. In this analogy, you have a shared office park or space with multiple offices occupied by different businesses. And each business has its own identification and access control mechanisms, as well as an issuing authority. Anyone that receives an ID from the issuing authority can then be identified as an employee of that company and is granted access to the unique office space. The unique business office space represents the trust domain because it's an administrative and security boundary. And the internal department that handles issuing identities is just like the issuing authority in the context of Spiffy. So that's the Spiffy ID and the Spiffy trust domain. Now I'll cover the Spiffy verifiable identity document, SVID for short. The SVID is not the actual identity. Just like a company card has encoded information that proves an employee's employment at a company, the SVID is a proof of identity for the workload or infrastructure component. Now, more specifically, it's a cryptographic document that is signed by the issuing authority in a trust domain. And the SVID can be one of two types of documents. It can be a X509 certificate or a JWT token. And the option that you go with will obviously depend on your use case specifics. All right. So I've already spoken about trust domains, but there are scenarios where you may want to extend the scope of trust by establishing secure connections between different trust domains. If you think back to the passport analogy, each country has its own issuing authority, but there is established trust between different countries so that they can validate the proof of identity for individuals from foreign countries. In the software space, you may have different teams or business units that each have their own trust domain, or you might have a trust domain on-prem and another one in a cloud environment. So for entities in different trust domains to establish secure communication, there has to be a mechanism that allows trust domain A to validate the identity of a foreign service from trust domain B. And this can only happen based on information that trust domain B provides. Remember, the service will have a Spiffy ID, which is a URI formatted string that contains the trust domain. 
So we need that foreign trust domain to provide some information that can be used to confirm that the service is who it says it is. This process of establishing trust between separate trust domains is known as spiffy federation. How do we establish this trust or federation between two trust domains? And that's where the spiffy trust bundle comes in. The spiffy trust bundle is a document that contains the public keys for a specific trust domain. Every issued SVID is represented in this trust bundle in a specific way so that the material in this trust bundle can be used to validate an SVID that claims to be part of that particular trust domain. Because the public keys are used for validation, the integrity of this material is critical because that's what's used to confirm the digital identity that was issued by the authority of that trust domain. If the integrity of this, bun this trust bundle is compromised, then an attacker could potentially create a fake digital ID to falsely validate a workload based on the modified trust bundle. Going back to the passport analogy, if a person from country B was traveling to country A, Country A would need a record of information from Country B that would help prove the identity of the traveling individual. If this record of information was tampered with and the traveling individual has a fake ID and passport, the compromised record of information won't be helpful in legitimately proving the identity of the individual or detecting the validity of their passport document. Now to circle back to Spiffy Federation. In order to establish trust between domains, we need to expose or share the trust bundle content through what is known as the bundle endpoint. And the bundle endpoint is a TLS protected HTTP service and has to be specified in your spiffy configuration along with the name of the, of the foreign trust domain. This way, when trust domain A has access to the trust bundle content for trust domain B, services inside trust domain A can locally validate identities of communicating services from trust domain B, kind of like the analogy I just gave. Finally, we come to the Spiffy Workload API. The Spiffy Workload API has the primary job of distribution. It's an unauthenticated server that delivers different important components to the workloads within a trust domain. It delivers both trust bundles and SVIDs to the respective entities. More specifically, it delivers the trust bundle for the domain that the workloads reside in, as well as any trust bundles for federated trust domains. As for the SVIDs that it distributes to the workloads and infrastructure components, they can either be X509 certs with keys or the JWT best based SVIDs. And it does this automatically and also rotates these documents when necessary. And that is a good point to stop. We've covered the main components or concepts around Spiffy. Next up, we'll take a look at Spire. As usual, please provide feedback. Let us know what you found helpful in this particular video and stay tuned for more.